Council Member Madeline Scales Harris has our prayer and pledge tonight. Ms. Scales Harris. Thank you. May we bow our heads. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the things that we take for granted so often. We thank you for this day that wasn't promised to us, Lord. We thank you for the food, shelter, and clothing that you provide for us, Lord. We ask that you give a special blessing and a special covering over those that are less fortunate than we are in any and every way, Lord. The things that we take for granted just tonight, just being in this presence of being comfortable, Lord. There are so many people that are hungry and that are clothes, clothing uh, are missing, Lord. We just ask that you also bless the ones that are on foreign soil tonight, Lord, fighting that we have the freedom that we have in our country. And Lord, at this time of the year, we ask that you bestow a gift that you've given all of us of giving, Lord. It does not have to be a monetary gift, just the gift of your presence that we can just service our community in the way that you would have us to service our community. And Lord, as we prepare for this meeting, we ask that you be in the presence of each and every one of us, that we make decisions that are, will be good for the entire city of Murfreesboro. And Lord, we just cannot thank you enough because at the end of the day, Lord, it's just all about you. And we just come to you just thanking you for your darling son. This is our prayer we ask in your darling son's name. Amen. 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 Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Murfreesboro City Council, December 9th, 2010. Uh, it's a wonderful evening and uh, we're certainly happy to have a special group of folks with us tonight, employees of the City of Murfreesboro. And uh, Mr. Lyons, I'll ask you if you would to gather those folks at the podium just for a minute while they're here, while I kind of explain uh, what, we're, uh, what we're excited about tonight. At their regular quarterly meeting last week, the Board of Directors of the Middle Tennessee Medical Center approved a resolution uh, to present to the Murfreesboro City Council uh, to offer a note of appreciation for the assistance provided by various department heads and other city leaders in the planning and construction of the Middle Tennessee Medical Center that we know today as the new hospital. So we're very excited at this time to uh, recognize all those employees, and I believe that Angie Boyd Chambers with the Middle Tennessee Medical Center is here. Uh, Gordon Ferguson, I saw him earlier this evening at another ribbon cutting over at the medical office building known as DePaul. And so Angie, I'll turn the podium over to you to make any comments that you'd like to uh, in keeping with this resolution passed by the Board of Directors of MTMC. Thank you, Mayor Bragg. And thank you, uh, Rob, Mr. Lyons, for um, you know what, what you have done. And uh, most importantly, I want to thank each and every one of you. Ferguson could not be here this evening and so he asked me if I would attend and I you know didn't even give that a second thought and was very honored to be able to be here to thank all of you up front every single one of you behind me because we are so excited to have this new hospital and um, to be able to have our board of directors approve this resolution to present to you tonight was a great honor for me to get to do. So um, Gordon does send his, regret, his regrets for not being here, but thank you all for allowing me to be here this evening and just thank you again for all of your support and also um, for everyone in this room tonight, just thank you and uh, MTMC is really glad to have this new hospital and if you haven't seen it please call me because I'd love to get you in for a tour not that you would be a patient just for a nice tour so thank thank you again thank you Angie for being here we're very pleased to recognize these uh, individuals and let me say these are from the Murfreesboro Planning and Engineering Department the Building and Codes Department the Murfreesboro Transportation Department the Police Department 
our fire department, our Murfreesboro Urban Environmental Department, the Water and Sewer Department, Electric Department, and let me say that I know our Solid Waste and Street Department will be out there too. So we're very pleased to recognize all of you and thank you again very much and for this appreciation from Middle Tennessee Medical Center. Thank you. This project got kicked off uh, while Mr. Haley was still city manager. He certainly got this uh, project off on, on the right foot, uh, but the team you just uh, recognized worked very, very hard uh, to make sure that this project got done. Uh, you know, we, In the course of building a, a project that's $280 million, it took uh, upwards of two years. Uh, I don't recall a single situation where things uh, got so got off track. There was never the emergency call to say, uh-oh. Um, we worked uh, great with their uh, design team, with their contractor, and certainly the hospital staff. So uh, you know, Jennifer Garland was a, uh, their key uh, person. She was terrific. Uh, but the staff worked really hard. And we w this was a problem-free project, and that went uh, to a lot of hard work for a lot of folks. So thank you for recognizing them. And I also wanted to mention, and I should have done this while she was here, but it's Amelia Kerr's birthday, and I wanted to make sure that uh, she got uh, birthday greetings, but I th I'm sure she has hurried out to a birthday celebration. Amelia works with our codes uh, uh, department, and I really appreciate what she does for us also. Angie, thanks again for being here tonight. Uh, we have some other special guests, uh, Boy Scout Troop 374, from Blackman Middle School is here. If all of you and your leadership would please stand and be recognized, we are happy to have you here. And uh, you may certainly. <laughs> you may stay as long as you wish, or you may uh, do some other things if you have planned tonight. Uh, but we're certainly proud that you're here and visiting with us, and we hope you'll come back often. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, let's see, uh, a couple of other things. We have an outstanding display of quilts in the City Hall Rotunda right now. My grandmother uh, made quilts. I think she lived under them for a long period of her life because uh, you just couldn't go down to the grocery store where she lived and go get them. You had to make them. So uh, I am really pleased and proud to mention that there is an outstanding exhibition of quilts in our City Hall Rotunda. And I uh, offer that any of you are interested in that and would just like to see some beautiful work uh, if you would come by the rotunda during the business hours today, uh, any day, we would be tickled to death to have you there. Uh, also, we have two members of Leadership Rutherford's current class, Bobby Hopkins and Ginger Wharf, I believe, who are here. If you all would stand and be recognized, we're pleased to have you with us tonight. Thank you for your participation in that program, and maybe one of these days, one of you, while the rest of us get off the council, you'll want to run for council, or maybe mayor. How about that? <laughs> Leadership Rutherford, we're very pleased that you're participating in that. I also would like for everyone to know that we have been through the design process of the Manny Avenue Improvement Project now for a couple of years, and the city of Murfreesboro is now ready to start construction phase of that project and construction is set to begin on Monday, December the 13th. And the contractor at that point will start constructing a drainage system south of Broad Street and proceed north uh, towards Manny Avenue. That total project is almost two years. It's 590 calendar days and uh, about $4.2 million that the city has agreed uh, on a bid to pay for that. That drainage, uh, new sidewalks, and new uh, viewscapes along the southern portion of Manny Avenue I think will be an exceptional project. Uh, I know that there will be some disruption and some inconvenience, but I hope people will work with us and uh, we look forward to the results of that project and I certainly know that uh, many people are excited to have that happy and then uh, have it happen and certainly in the days to come maybe we'll get uh, started on looking at the North Manny uh, side of uh, a really a traditional downtown neighborhood that's uh, really uh, a, an outstanding and 
a wonderful place to live and work and uh, be a part of our community. So that will get started. If you have any questions or any comments regarding that construction process and the project itself, 893-6441 is our planning department. Uh, we'll have people there who will be able to answer questions and uh, meet with you if you have some questions or concerns regarding uh, or during that uh, construction project. Very pleased to have that done. Anything else uh, from the council before we begin our agenda? If not, uh, you have before you your consent agenda. If you've had an opportunity to review those items, are there any questions regarding the consent agenda? If not, is there a motion that we accept the consent agenda as it is presented? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gailey. Aye. Ms. Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. We'll consider now for passage on third and final reading an ordinance amending Murfreesboro City Code Chapter 25 and a quarter signs, section 25 and a quarter two. 20, 25, 26, and 27, dealing with plan development, BP, and GDO overlay zone signage, development ID signs, and sign permits and fees. Move for approval. Second. All right, you must, uh, you have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. All right. You now have before you a certificate of compliance for Anton Woods Jr. and Ronald Akins at Shade Tree Packaging, 324 South Manny Avenue. Ms. Wright. Mayor, on October 28th, two certificates of compliance applications were received. The applicants for Antoine Woods Jr. and Ronald Akins to operate a retail package store named Shade Tree Packaging at 324 South Manny Avenue. After the public hearing, the City Council voted to defer consideration on these certificates of compliance. Since that date, City Council approved Ordinance 10 38 which has a distance requirement between liquor stores and churches in the commercial highway zoning. The location at 324 South Manny Avenue no longer meets the zoning requirements as a result of the passage and immediate effectiveness of this ordinance. City Council needs to vote on the pending application within 60 days of the application date or they will be deemed to be approved. This is the last regular City Council meeting before the expiration of the 60-day period. Since failure to meet municipal location requirements is a basis for denying the application, a vote to deny the applications would be in order. All right, then is there a motion on this certificate of compliance? Move for deny. Second. You have a motion second to deny. Any questions regarding the motion? If not, call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. This certificate is denied. We'll now hear from the Building and Codes Director regarding swimming pool alarms and consider for passage on first reading an ordinance amending Murfreesboro City Code Chapter 7, Buildings, Section 712, and Chapter 11, Electricity. Section 1113 dealing with swimming pool <coughs> alarms. Mr. Whitaker, welcome. Evening, Mayor, Council. Before you tonight is uh, for consideration uh, a uh, proposed amendment to our <coughs> ordinances which deal with the uh, swimming pool regulations. Early in the year, the Tennessee General Assembly passed a law that requires all swimming pools, hot tubs, and non portable spas installed uh, after the first of the year to be equipped with a safety alarm. That safety alarm would sound if uh, someone entered the water. And uh, the reason that we're before you tonight is they tied that into the electrical. So basically upon approval of, before we can actually approve the, ele the electrical inspection, we have to ensure that that <coughs> alarm device has been installed. Now this again is a state law. Before you tonight is a request to adopt that verbiage as city ordinance. Now, naturally, we issue swimming pool permits 
and do inspections on the, on the swimming pools. Uh, this would just be a supplement uh, to that, uh, those requirements. And again, we're required to enforce the state law due to the fact that they tied it to the electrical approval. So it's before you tonight for consideration, and I'll answer any questions at this time. Any questions for Mr. Whitaker regarding this ordinance? Move for passage on first read. Second. Motion and second. Call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilley. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. At this time, we'll consider the Community Development Director's recommendation for micro enterprise loans for A. Jennifer Hosey Recess Playroom Drop In Child Center, Trey Holmes, Tammy Stout, Dream Smart, Jeff Hess, and the Ascent Climb Your Rock. Welcome. How are you, Mr. Callow? Wonderfully well, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm so glad to be here to talk about this one this evening. You'll remember that in July of 2009, we put money into the budget for uh, our microenterprise uh, project. We set up a contract with uh, the Tennessee Small Business Development Center at uh, MTSU and the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, after 18 months, we have our first loan applications. Uh, these have uh, these businesses have been working with the small business uh, center uh, to develop uh, uh, their business plans. Uh, they uh, have been certified to us as being loan ready. We uh, have uh, farmed these uh, out uh, for uh, perusal by our uh, partners. Uh, on our loan advisory committee. In this case, uh, we've had uh, uh, bikers from uh, our partners at Pinnacle and at SunTrust look these over. Uh, they've brought uh, back, uh, they've sent us back their recommendations, and so I'm really proud that we can put these forward uh, to you tonight. Uh, in, uh, in several cases, the, uh, the bankers suggested that we put in some provisos, uh, and uh, in, uh, in the case of the, the last one, the ascent, our funding would be uh, part of a layer on that, so uh, we would, uh, our, our loan would be conditional on uh, the, uh, the borrower being able to uh, put the primary financing in place. Uh, on uh, the Dream Smart application, uh, uh, part of the requirement uh, is uh, that they're going to have to create some jobs within six months. That was uh, something that we consulted with HUD about. And uh, on the first one, I just want to share with you. Uh, um, this is from a letter that uh, our partner uh, who reviewed this uh, uh, sent us. Uh, I'm quite impressed with the application, uh, but she also points out that uh, uh, there are some cons to this, and so we'll share those with the uh, the small business uh, center and with the uh, their uh, uh, the borrower to make sure that that all gets incorporated into the the plan. Um, also, I might remind you that uh, one of the things that we set up is to help our, our, our business partners, uh, give them the best shot at success. Part of the deal is that uh, we're going to be paying for accounting services for the first year. Uh, and uh, everybody seems to think that's a pretty good idea to, to help these businesses uh, get started on the, wrong, uh, on the right foot. Right foot. <laughs> So uh, it is my recommendation that we uh, uh, approve all three of these loans. All right. Any questions from Mr. Callow regarding this request? Are, are um, great work on this. Are, are all these three businesses in the city of Murfreesboro? Absolutely. That's one of the requirements. The business is going to have to be inside the city limits, just like our other uh, CDBG projects. And uh, they will be creating jobs inside the city of Murfreesboro. Uh, they'll be uh, paying business taxes, all the, the things that, uh, that make for a, a really good economic development project. Good question. Anything else? Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Callow, for working on this. Is there a motion that we accept this recommendation? Mayor, one question. Yes, Mr. Mr. Callow, how many jobs do you think might be created out of this? Well, I, I, the, we have to remember what a micro enterprise is. It's uh, is a business that is five or fewer. 
So uh, in, in the beginning, we're probably talking maximum 15 jobs, but you never know what it's going to grow into. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, this is the time of, I hope somebody gives me a box of Christie cookies. Yeah. Christie Cookies started as a micro enterprise in Nashville, Tennessee, using CDBG money, and they, of course, grown to be a national firm. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, some of our micro enterprises grow that way. Other questions? And is there a motion to accept this? So moved, Mayor. Second. Thank you, Mr. Young, Mr. Washington. Any questions on the motion? Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Brasher. Aye. Mr. Gailey. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Callahan. Thank you. I hope you'll share those cookies with the council. <laughs> consider recommendations of the Planning Commission to schedule a public hearing to consider zoning changes for approximately 53.4 acres located west of Armstrong Valley Road. <laughs> Mr. Adelot, welcome. Thank you, Mayor and members of the Council. During its regular meeting on December 1st of 2010, the Murfreesboro Planning Commission considered and recommended approval of the following matter, and that is the uh, zone change to rezone 53.4 acres from PRD to RS-15 located, actually that's east of Armstrong Valley Road. That's a typographical error in my letter. Uh, this was a relatively uh, easy item for the Planning Commission to consider, and I don't think it'll take much of the Council's time either. Ms. McGannon? Mayor, I would suggest January 13th. January 13th. Council members, does that meet with your approval? <coughs> Move set a public hearing January the 13th. Uh, I'll second, but also noted that we are in the, um, the description that it's east of Armstrong Valley Road instead of west of Armstrong Valley Road. All right, motion and second. Any other uh, questions regarding the motion? Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Brancher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adelot. This time we'll consider recommendations from the city manager with regards to a proposed engineering contract amendments with regards to Fortress Boulevard, Manson Pike, and Gresham Lane. My understanding is the proposed use agreement between the city and the county schools for a central magnet baseball has been withdrawn. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. It looks like um, central magnet will be um, having discussions directly with uh, the VA uh, and not uh, with the city as a party to that. So uh, I think they're still trying to see if they can make something happen. We just uh, won't be a party to that. I understand. If you'll then go through this proposed engineering contract amendment. Yes, sir. Uh, what we've got uh, before you this evening is uh, my recommendation uh, to uh, have a contract amendment uh, with the engineering firm uh, that designed Fortress uh, Gresham and Manson realignment and also uh, Veterans Parkway 3C. Um, it would be to convert their basis of compensation for basic services from a percent of construction contract, a per percent of construction cost, to a lump sum amount uh, for those three projects. Uh, these three projects were designed at a time where the economy was still good. Uh, in our normal process, when we pay uh, an engineer on a percent of uh, construction cost, uh, they develop cost estimates, and they were using data from the pre-recession uh, construction uh, costs at that point in time. However, when these projects were bid, uh, they came in substantially less than what the estimates were. As a result, it's caused me to uh, step back and look to see uh, what was fair, and it's why I bring you this uh, recommendation. Uh, I can tell you those uh, three uh, road projects, uh, the city saved $4.26 million in construction costs. Uh, when we went into these projects and developed our capital improvement plan, uh, we had budgeted at one number, uh, but when the economy uh, took the downturn, uh, all of a sudden uh, contractors were looking for jobs. There were more contractors available to us. Uh, and as a result, we did see substantial cost savings in these construction uh, contracts. Uh, the unintended consequence was, was the impact um, on the design uh, firms uh, for the city. Uh, they certainly provided all of the services that were required in that contract. Uh, they did everything uh, they were supposed to do, everything we asked them to do, uh, and it just seems like they would be uh, unfairly penalized. So the uh, recommendation would be to convert this to a lump sum uh, contract. Uh, so, in a sense, we have paid them for their services. 
but for a uh, small amount of money uh, to manage uh, inspection for the remaining uh, few months of these uh, projects uh, and to hold uh, the construction uh, review meetings. Uh, so inspection services and con construction uh, review meetings at $1,000 per month, uh, but after that we would have already paid them. I'd be certainly happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Lenz regarding this recommendation? All right, you have these amendments which are attached to these contracts which would change the compensation of basic services from a percentage to a lump, a lump sum on these three contracts which have, I guess, been substantially completed. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the uh, Veterans Parkway 3C project uh, may be done uh, by the end of the year, uh, if not shortly thereafter. Uh, the realignment of Fortress uh, Gresham and Manson I think still has uh, about nine months uh, to go. So that one is uh, work is progressing uh, very nicely, but it's it's still got a little bit longer uh, time frame. Now that we're through the transition of the down from the economy, you don't see this happening anymore, do you? This problem should be take care of itself. Yeah. Well, yes, sir. That because the because when the price is dropped, the estimates that happen for the projects after that reflected the pricing of the the downturn. Uh, but to take it one step further, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, the, we want to change our form of compensation for engineers in the future. Um, we want to look at doing an hourly rate with a not to exceed figure. Uh, last week, Mr. Crumley brought you an engineering contract. That contract was not done on a percent of construction cost, but it was done on this hourly rate with a figure that's not uh, to be exceeded. That gives us an opportunity to plan and budget and really takes that uh, variable out of place. So I think we've uh, made an adjustment uh, from this point in the future. This being money already paid, Mayor, I, th I think it's probably the only option we have at this point. So I make a motion we approve the recommendations. All right. Second. There's a second. Was there a question, Mr. Young? No, no. I was. Um, um, Any other one? Anyone else have a question on the motion? If not, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gelly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lyons. This time we will consider recommendations of the city attorney with regards to a brokerage service for excess workers' compensation coverage. Ms. McGannon. Thank you, Mayor Bragg. On your table tonight was placed a letter giving you some information in addition to that, which was in the council's packet. Uh, and that is a recommendation that the council authorize staff to contract with uh, the firm Occusure Workers' Compensation Specialists out of Brentwood, Tennessee. And they were one of six firms that responded to the city's request for qualifications to get brokerage services to assist us in finding excess insurance for our self-insured workers' compensation program. As the council knows, that's uh, the city's choice to provide workers' compensation coverage. We don't have to do so, but having chosen to do so, we need to follow the state's rules for self-insured entities. One of the state's rules for self-insured entities is that they have excess insurance we had tried to obtain that going directly without success in the past. Therefore, we feel it necessary to get the assistance of a broker. We put the RFQ out seeking people who, seeking firms who had experience in this specialized area since we, workers comp, self-insurance, and self-administered, which is somewhat atypical, especially for, uh, and being government, which is also different. We were very pleased with the um, number and, and excellence of the firms that responded. Uh, Accusure focuses only on workers' compensation. It has considerable experience with self-insurance programs, and it is relatively local. Um, it represents Knox County in addition to other governmental clients. And after considering uh, the six responses, the recommendation to you is to enter into negotiations with them for their assistance in getting this required excess insurance. They made their proposal 
on a percentage of premium basis, we would like the council's approval to extend to allowing uh, the city manager to explore negotiations with them on an alternate fee basis to see whether or not an hourly or not to exceed or lump sum figure might uh, have some advantages to the city. Uh, so we'd like that flexibility. Uh, and we would like that now so that we can engage them and start to work in assembling the information they'll need to assist us in trying to obtain this coverage. I'd be happy to answer any questions about the recommendation. Any questions for Ms. McGannon? There are no questions on there that we approve the recommendation. Second. We have a motion and second. Any questions regarding the motion? If not, please call the roll, Ms. Roll. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Scales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. Do we have any beer permits for consideration tonight? Mayor, we have several tonight. Hmm. <clears throat> we have two that are completely uh, finished with our requirements. One is a market ownership change at 2415 Halls Hill Heights, Suite A. We also have a restaurant ownership and name change at 2805 Old Fort Parkway. They have uh, met our requirements. We have three more that are in the process of getting their their uh, finals done and with the year end coming to a close, I thought I would try to get you what I could so far and then when they pass building and codes inspections, I'd like to be able to issue these. One is a restaurant, new location at 1875 Memorial Boulevard, Suite A. One is a uh, convenience store, ownership change at 1002A Memorial Boulevard. And one is a new restaurant out at the Avenue, 2615 Medical Center Parkway. Uh, I believe the number 2250 may end up being their street number. I'm not quite sure. I couldn't tell from the application. But I'll have a better idea of that when the building codes inspection form comes back because they always get that correct. All right. Any questions for Ms. Wright regarding these beer applications? If there are no questions, is there a motion that we accept them as they've been presented? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll, Ms. Wright. Vice Mayor Bratcher. Aye. Mr. Gilly. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. You, at this time, you have before you a list of the statements to be considered for payment. Are there any questions regarding any of those bills and the amounts that are to be paid? Is there a motion we pay the bills? Do we pay the statements? Second. Motion and second. Please call the roll. Vice Mayor Bradshaw. Aye. Mr. Gannon. Aye. Ms. Gales Harris. Aye. Mr. McFarland. Aye. Mr. Washington. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Mayor Bragg. Aye. I have no board and commission appointments to you, Mr. Lyons. Yes, sir. Other business from the staff or city council to come before the council at this time, Mr. McFarland. Mr. Lyons, I know we, we had got some information from Judge Sellers. I think the council did regarding uh, a survey on additional court hours. Mm -hmm. I was going to see if it was possible. I don't know what's the, the proper procedure to go through, but if we could maybe have some recommendations after the first of the year so we could, as a council, make a decision on how we want to proceed with that. Okay, very good. I'll get with the judge and we will bring something to you right after the first of the year. All right, thank you, Mr. McFarland. We certainly appreciate our guests being with us and staying with us tonight. We're happy to have you. Please come back often. Any other business to come before the council? If not, you're adjourned.